Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm talking about upward spread of masking and how it can totally destroy the clarity that you get from your hearing aids. Coming up. Do you ever wonder why you seem to struggle with your hearing aids? Well, I don't, because I constantly see a variety of different programming errors that can lead to a significant reduction in performance with your devices. In fact, it does not even matter how awesome or expensive your hearing aids are. If they have not been programmed correctly, you are not going to be getting the maximum amount of benefit from them. The bad news is, unless you have a decent understanding of acoustics, you wouldn't even know if one of these simple, common programming mistakes was being made. One of these programming mistakes that I'm referring to can cause a phenomenon called upward spread of masking, which can totally destroy the clarity that you get from your hearing aids. This is why I'm going to teach you all about upward spread of masking and what you can do to prevent it. But before I do, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out my channel because it gets these videos in front of a bigger audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos and I release multiple new videos every single week. With that said, I really appreciate it. Now let's first take a look at how the human ear works so you can understand the concept of upward spread of masking. The human ear consists of three parts. The outer ear, which includes the pinna, ear canal, and eardrum. The middle ear, which includes the three middle ear bones called ossicles, the middle ear cavity, and the eustachian tube. And the inner ear, which consists of the semicircular canals, which control balance, and the cochlea, which is your hearing organ. As sound enters the ear, it vibrates the eardrum, which sends that vibration through these three middle ear bones and ultimately into the cochlea through the oval window. As the stapes bone sends this vibration of sound through the oval window into the cochlea, it creates a traveling wave that vibrates the basilar membrane. The basilar membrane is coated with the high frequency regions near the entrance or base of the cochlea, where the low frequency regions are more towards the end of the cochlea at the apex. High frequency sounds only vibrate the base of the basilar membrane, where low frequency sounds must first travel through the high frequency ranges before they reach the lower frequency regions. If the vibrations of low frequency sounds are too intense, they can mask over the high frequency regions. Clinically, this phenomenon is what we like to call upward spread of masking. When we look at different speech sounds, it is important to understand that the high frequency consonant sounds give the perception of clarity and the low frequency vowel sounds give you the perception of volume. Most individuals with hearing loss have a sensory neural hearing loss and most of those individuals have more of a high frequency loss than they do a low frequency loss. This typically creates the perception of you being able to hear someone, you just can't understand what they're actually saying. This is why it is so critical to have hearing aids that are properly amplifying these high frequency sounds so you can get clarity back. However, if low frequency sounds are being over amplified by hearing aids, they can actually mask over your perception of these high frequency consonant sounds which take away your clarity in speech. Of course, some individuals require low frequency amplification if they have a hearing loss in these low frequency ranges. So how do you actually prevent the upward spread of masking from occurring? First is by performing real ear measurement. Real ear measurement is the gold standard way to verify that your hearing aids have been programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. If your hearing aids are programmed correctly, then you can ensure that the low, mid, and high frequency amplification levels are not going to be causing upward spread of masking. If the amplification levels of low frequency sounds that are measured inside of your ear canal are exceeding your low frequency prescriptive targets, then chances are you're going to be causing this phenomenon to occur. Here is an example of what to look for when having real ear measurement done. When performing real ear measurement, the purpose is to verify how much amplification you are receiving from a hearing aid inside of your ear canal at your eardrum. The hash mark line is the prescription for your hearing loss, and the solid line is the amplification from your hearing aid. Ideally, you would want the solid line to overlap with the hash mark line as closely as possible. On the right hand side, you have the high frequency measures, and on the left hand side you have the low frequency measures. As you can see here, there is a pretty good match of the purple hash mark prescription line with the solid amplification line. But take a look at some bad programming, in this case with the pink hash mark target and the solid pink lines. We are over amplifying the low frequency sounds and under amplifying the high frequency sounds. 
This is a perfect recipe for upward spread of masking because this over amplification of low frequencies are going to drown out the perception for the high frequencies and they would likely do so even if the high frequencies were directly on target. If you want to learn more about Realer Measurement and how it can help you avoid a variety of different common programming mistakes, then I will link my video to that in the description. The second way to prevent upward spread of masking is by opening up the venting on your hearing aid ear mold or your rubber dome. The perception of low frequency amplification can only be achieved if you trap these low frequencies inside of your ear canals. So if you open up the venting on your ear mold or open up the venting on your dome, then it will allow a lot of these low frequency sounds to leak out of your ear so you do not perceive them. Another negative thing that can happen if you have vents that are too small or closed off entirely is insertion loss. This is when you actually give yourself a hearing loss, in this case in the high frequency range, and then if you over amplify the low frequencies, it's kind of like a double whammy where you're not getting enough high frequency and you're getting too much low frequency, which is a really bad case of upward spread of masking. The important thing to know about different types of domes and different sizes of ear mold venting is that you have to strike a very careful balance between open and closed, otherwise you are going to significantly reduce the performance of your devices. A little side note here, but upward spread of masking is one of the main reasons why individuals with a reverse slope hearing loss or a cookie bite hearing loss do not get a lot of benefit with hearing aids if you close off the ear canals to amplify these low and mid frequencies. Now I want to be careful here because it's important for you to understand that if you do happen to have some low frequency hearing loss, I'm not saying that you should not amplify it. You should amplify it, you just have to make sure that you don't over amplify it. This is another reason why performing real ear measurement is so critical when programming a set of hearing aids. Because if you don't verify, then you really have no idea what's going on inside of the ear canal, and you could be inadvertently over amplifying certain frequencies and under amplifying others. At the end of the day, there is a solid chance that if you feel like you're not getting the right amount of clarity out of your hearing aids, that a programming error of over amplifying the low frequencies could be causing upward spread of masking, giving you that perception. This is why it's so important for you to have a foundational understanding of acoustics and the anatomy and physiology of the human ear so this mistake doesn't happen to you. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.